Hi everyone, welcome back to How to Save the Planet. Now, this is a very different podcast episode to what we usually talk about, and that's because we're in very different times with, uh, you know, with the coronavirus um, and the need for us to be social distancing. So, with that said, we thought it would be the perfect opportunity to bring together a few staff um, from Friends of the Earth to chat about how they're feeling, some of the top tips um, that they have in terms of. Um, coping with emotions um, and even, you know, Netflix recommendations. So we hope this gives you some sort of light relief and if nothing else, just solidarity knowing that you're not alone and that we're in this together. Hi, everyone. Uh, Live from our individual living rooms and maybe bedrooms um uh just to chat about life in i guess in in these very strange times um let's kick off in the introductions louisa hey uh, it's louisa here um i run the creative and content team at friends of the earth and i am currently working from my bedroom oh very nice nick oh hi i'm nick i'm on succumbent into friends of the earth from the water sector i'm working innovation team currently drinking lots of decaf tea from my lounge oh smart because i've been on the cafe <laughs> danny hey everyone i'm danny i work in friends of the earth campaign to reforest the uk and i'm currently standing next to my makeshift desk um standing desk in my bedroom oh that must be a bit much better for the joints than sitting down all day okay this might get confusing but lanny hi i'm lanny you might know me as alana uh, from all the emails i i've sent you recently um, I run the support to care team at Friends of the Earth. So we're still in business looking after you all, answering all your lovely emails. Amazing. And last but not least, Isabel. Hello, I'm Isabel. I am in the content team at Friends of the Earth and I've uh, kicked my flatmates out and I'm in the living room. Okay. So everyone, this has been a big change to our life. What What would you say is your biggest change to your life since this health crisis has begun? Nick, can I start with you? Yeah, I think it's just not physically seeing anybody. I'm a bit of a huggy person and um, it's really weird not seeing, especially you guys and your mates and your family. Um, I think especially as it's hit on Mother's Day as well, that was a that was sort of a big struggle for me. Um, I'm not sure if that's the same for everybody else, but definitely that sort of hit home when you couldn't just have that physical contact with people. Yeah, can, I, can anyone else relate with not having, as in lack of physical contact being very difficult? I'm so lucky because I've got Chris. I've got my my lovely ten year old um, at home with me Aww. all the time, and and actually right now I'm really enjoying it. Him being off school, and um, it's such a lovely opportunity for us to spend loads of time together. So as a single parent, it's just me and him. But I'm I'm not lacking in any kind of physical contact. So I feel really really lucky at the moment. Yeah, I feel quite lucky as well because I live with three close friends. Um, I know it's, this is probably a much tougher time for people who live alone. Um, so I feel lucky that I can still socialise a lot and chat and garden and, and just mess around generally with friends. Shared, shared flats are really coming into their own in this one, I think. Definitely. I live with my yeah. family, though, so it is a roller coaster. <laughs> some, days, <laughs> some days I love them. Other days I'm like, please get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> just walking around in circles um have, has anyone found kind of working from home life quite difficult because I think one of the things that I read um from a couple of friends was that sometimes we try to replicate you know office working and I think we're all very grateful to still have kind of um, a job that we can do work from home, we can do from home and feel kind of secure to do but like you try to replicate the office at home and it doesn't work does anyone else feel that like disjointed I, th- I think, yeah, definitely. You can't just sit down for eight hours and get all your work done. There's things around the house that you're doing. And it's also just that you don't have that sort of stimulation around you to keep you going. Mm. You're just sat in the corner of your lounge with yourself, a cup of tea and a house plan to keep you company. Because <laughs> I'm literally on my own and kind of that's, it gets to what, two hours in and I'm looking for a distraction, which isn't good. So it's good just to walk away from it, do some jobs and stuff, then come back. Yeah, it's, it's it's a bit strange. I mean, I work from home half of the week usually anyway, um, but kind of the dynamics with work stuff and colleagues and them getting used to working from home as well. And I think we've gone through uh, fits and spurts of people think like feeling like they need to be at the computer, like online and present for that whole period. And then now we're getting into the swing of it. People are realising, you know, you do need to get up and, 
go and have a little walk around the garden or go make a cup of tea and take five minutes out like you would in the office. Um, so, so it's been, I can see the adjustments happening, but it, it's really tricky to, to know the balance of, of how much work you would get done in the office versus at home and try not to feel guilty about it as well. Yes, guilt is a big thing because I don't know if if you guys have seen on social media the productivity warriors, as I personally call them, who (laughs) who say use this period. You've got to write a novel now, or you've got learn a language. Yes, (laughs) a big sourdough bread. (laughs) (laughs) I made the caption. Does that count? Uh, Chris wants to learn Japanese. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, if he can do it, all power to him. Yeah. Yeah, well, I have to teach him, don't I? So. Well, we just watch TV and I know. Like <laughs> I think this is it, though, isn't it? It's like the, there is. We do have a bit of a culture where it's just like you have to be productive all the time, and Nikki and I and I've definitely done it. Like I've last week, I was really like, well, if I'm not working, then I should be like reading or doing so, or like I like doing something in the garden, or like just being being productive because that will mm. like get you through. And like sometimes that is really helpful, but definitely this week I've started to be a bit more like actually like this. It's a, a really weird time for everyone, and it's like you're allowed to just kind of sit sometimes and, That's right. and have a minute. Everyone's in the same position at the moment throughout the country and the world where they're feeling like they um, are thrown into a completely different set of priorities and worries and you see people having completely different problems um, and everybody's got something that that they're trying to place in the level of what's important and what's not important. It's such a confusing time. Um, so so it's so important to relax back and take stock a little bit. Um, our team are, are really struggling with the fact that we're slowing down a bit and making sure that all our supporters are okay and everybody's everybody's doing all right wellbeing wise. And so, you know, we've we've asked them to concentrate on just, you know, talking to people. Whereas we're used to having quite high activity and lots of action happening and and it's been a real big adjustment. I can imagine. I, yeah, I think so it's, it's, I agree with everyone. It's the idea of just go easy on yourself. This is going to, this is a marathon and not a sprint. And you don't need to be, like your worth isn't determined by how productive you are in this period. Yeah, I think as well, like it's, it's reminded me, you know, some of the work we did around like eco-anxiety earlier in the year is like kind of come back a bit. And like we are talking about when you're faced with a problem as big as this um, or like something happening as big as this, like what we're talking about, obviously at the time we were talking about the climate um but obviously this is like this a similar like the same level of global globally affected um crisis and like that anxiety and that stress is like good and natural to feel and I think like it can be tempting to try and like shove it away and be like no I'll just do enough and I won't feel it and um yeah I'm being reminded that you're allowed to just be a bit bummed out when things have gone insane yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. it's one of the most normal things to feel. Um, and I guess speaking about anxiety and emotional stress, it'd be really good to hear about how everyone is coping in their own way with something really massive um, that could be affecting us actually on a personal level as well. Um, so is anyone is anyone doing anything to help them? I've, I've just noticed that, um, I mean, we're speaking about our expectations of our own workload. And I think that's changed massively since it's begun because before we were exposed to all this social media and stimulus that was going, everyone else is doing everything all the time. And actually they weren't, but it's just this perception we're pushing out on social media. And now because we're all at home, no one's posting anything and no one's getting any FOMO. (laughs) So there's no sort of like fear of missing out on anything because there's nothing to do anyway. So I I think that's helped me massively because I haven't felt like I'm missing out on anything. I haven't put more pressure on myself. And it's been quite nice just to slow down and take that expectation away from yourself. So many online pub quizzes you could be doing there, Nick. Oh, I could be, but I'm terrible at them, so no, no one wants me in their team. <laughs> so many things to do. It's true that I've actually enjoyed having less to do. I think living in London, there's just, on any given day, there's a hundred things that you feel you should be doing, whether it's like going to a new gallery or seeing a friend that you haven't seen for several months or doing some hobby that you've sidelined for a few months. And and it's kind of nice that you I can't actually do a lot of those things. Um, 
But as I say, there are still people trying to kind of recreate that and trying to put in all these house parties and quizzes and 30 day song challenges and trying to make sourdough bread and stuff. So I think even in this situation, we still have to guard against feeling that we have to we have to do something and, and kind of comparing ourselves to others um, and just looking out for our own well-being. And something that I found really helpful is, is doing meditation in the morning. So I think at this time, I think it's quite easy to get trapped in negative thought processes. Um, and so I've been doing meditation in the garden in the morning, and it's just kind of helps me to get out of my mind a little bit and, and focus on my body and, um, and also how I'm feeling. So, yeah. That sounds nice. No, that's really interesting. Couldn't agree more with the with the pressure shifting to uh, kind of physical meetups onto online things, and it's the same with um, because I'm I'm homeschooling at the moment as well as trying to work full time from home. Um, and I looked up at my phone while I was in a meeting a couple of days ago, and there was like a hundred and twenty WhatsApp messages from one of the kind of parents groups um, where everyone is trying to find their feet as to what is the right level of of homeschooling and then people trying to keep each other same, sane with, with it all. And um, I think there's a lot of anxiety around people finding their swing with um, replicating what they would do on a day-to-day basis. And it's, yeah, we're, we're chilling and relaxing a bit with it, um, just getting ourselves into a gentle routine. Um, I'm enjoying it, actually, at the moment. We're only a week in. <laughs> True. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, whilst I can't relate on the homeschool front, I can definitely relate on the, the WhatsApping. Honestly, all of the old WhatsApp groups have suddenly like come back to life and everyone I is... Know, right? I've never had so many Zoom meetings as well. Just <laughs> all my oh friends. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Can't just, escape Zoom. I got a like three-hour Zoom chat last night, which was great. But at the same time, I was like, "Everyone, get out of my lounge." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that's, that's too long. I I've had to leave WhatsApp groups because just, yeah. some of them are just too annoying. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've started saying no to stuff just on just on the basis because I was having this conversation um, yesterday, and like this thing of like it's harder to say no because everyone knows that you're not out or like doing anything else but so I've, I've started just being like nah I just need to like sit by myself and like read or like play video games or something I can't have another like video call I can't do it it's too yeah. much I'm a bit like that with my family as well at the moment who are like constantly skyping or facetiming and I I did say the other day I was like well we, we don't do this usually <laughs> so you know <laughs> now now we're all like oh my gosh we have to see each other all the time when you know I did um, have a lovely uh FaceTime with my sister uh, the other night uh where we cooked together and um oh. that was yeah so I didn't feel like I had to sit down and spend half an hour just like talking to someone about nonsense so we kind of got on with our usual evening routine but did it together and that was that was really nice okay I guess you decide who you really like in this period because I don't know if you saw the stories <laughs> of like couples coming out of isolation being like, no, we're getting divorced <laughs> because I actually, <laughs> cause like, I actually don't really like you. So in this time, you know who your friends really are and who you want to keep as yeah. friends. But it's been, it's been a test on like friendships as well, I found, especially when the government guidelines weren't as sort of strict, different people following them in different ways and people sort of, telling people off for doing stuff or not thinking friends were sort of being as serious as they should be it was really sort of quite tense time in some whatsapp groups I was in I think yeah when there was there was a period where I felt that you know there was a lack of kind of clear uh guidance from from the top and I think that then people felt that um that we had to step in yeah, and yeah. kind of create our own rules and I think that that did create tension I think yeah it's true like, I... group, like we were just kind of people having to, people almost apologizing for going you know I had a fat mate who was apologizing for going and seeing friends and it's like oh you know you shouldn't have to apologize for that yeah you should know what you're able to do and not do, and not do it's yeah it's yeah it's definitely been a confusing time and I think 
also at the same time a lot of people have been um like even now you know like we're, we're, a lot of people are thankfully following the rules but then you still see i don't know if you guys saw the clip on social media where people in shepherd's bush were sunbathing and then the police had to be like this is not a holiday you were on lockdown um so yeah so there's like it's like this frustrating thing of like I want to do, like, I, I feel like I'm doing what's good. I know my friends are doing what's good, but, you know, we can't get through this unless we all do what we have to do. I think it is really, I think it's really natural and really tempting to kind of like, to feel frustrated at individuals who don't seem to be, to be following the guidance like we have. But I think also, ultimately, this is the responsibility of the government um, to, first of all, set really guidance and to set really clear guidance, which I think Absolutely. It hasn't done, and, and and also enforce that properly with rules. And and a lot mm. of the people who who are sometimes being condemned, like we don't know their situation. So, for example, a lot of those people um, in the tube, where there were videos of people, you know, packed tubes. A lot of them probably had employers who expected them, you know, to come to the warehouses that day to to work. Um, and a lot of you know, a lot of people are being either required by their employer or required by 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 the government to work. So, and yeah. on a reduced yeah. service as well. Yeah, and just exactly. building on that, when we look at sort of these images in the media, there's they're always just a snapshot in time of what's actually going on. But I got frustrated at the weekend because I went for a walk um, on my own, ended up around Clapham Common, and that was where there was scenes of hundreds of people um on the common in the sun uh walking around there were people that were in large groups but the vast majority of people were in ones twos or threes and you could assume that they're housemates or something so you can't necessarily imply that everyone's breaking the rules for a photo um there's just a lot of narrative around this so we need to be really critical of what we're seeing through media and even just reduce what we're seeing through media and just living our own lives no that is a very fair point i want to move us on a bit slightly to something um very important what are you guys all watching on netflix because <laughs> <laughs> i know um, i've had to I've had to move off of Netflix this week. Uh, no, I mean, I'm still on Netflix, obviously, but the show I'm watching is on on Channel 4. Um, you yeah. haven't completed it. I haven't <laughs> finished Netflix yet. Um, <laughs> obviously, Tiger King documentaries that will be coming soon. I not so many things. Um, but there's a new comedy on Channel 4 called um, Feel Good by uh, it was a comedian, Mae Martin, that I like because I've started watching that. That's been, that's good. Ooh, that looks that brilliant. Cool. Yeah. When you when you go back to Netflix, I recommend Tiger King. Okay. Ooh. It doesn't have to be Netflix. It could just be how you're keeping yourselves, the kids. Yeah. Happy. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a Netflix ad. <laughs> yeah. No, no. All but streaming this is a great so show. Well. <laughs> I, I didn't think I needed it in my life, but I did. And it's just, yeah, I strongly <laughs> recommended it. I, I thought it would be just about tigers in a sanctuary, but it's basically Oh, drama. no. Oh, that great. guy. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, the mallet. I'm going to leave it there. I've been watching a TV series called Succession, um, which is about a very wealthy kind of media tycoon family. And all of the characters are absolutely despicable. Every single one of them, (laughs) awful human beings. Um, And it is quite, it is, it's, it's really funny to watch, but at times it's just been a little bit too dark. So I had to counterbalance that by watching a show called Shrill which is just a really kind of like feel good show about a woman uh, in Portland who finally starts sticking up for herself against her boss, against her rubbish boyfriend. And, and it's just, it's just a really lovely kind of heartwarming TV series that I recommend if you, if you want a lift. I'm going back to Shit's Creek a lot for feeling, for feel good moments. Yes. If anything goes a bit dark, just like any episode will lift me right up. I still haven't seen a single so episode. Yeah. Oh, Nick, you've got to get on it. It's I know, the best. I lived. Okay, we're gonna do it today. I I survived my first week with Love Is Blind, which oh, was awful. Love is but blind. It got me through Amazing. my first week of self isolation. <laughs> also, yeah, we've had no time. Well, I haven't had any time to watch television at the moment. Um, so I'm gently bringing it back into my my diet. Um, we <laughs> we have a uh, yeah we've we've got Disney Plus now, uh, which was conveniently released. Oh, this I week. love so, Disney Plus so much. I know. So I've been watching Pixar shorts um, oh, just nice. to like get all of my oh. emotions out. So yeah. I just 
cry and then I feel better afterwards. Um, and we started watching The Mandalorian, which I've been looking forward to for so long. Um, until last night, I realised that they'd only released two episodes. And so I was sad all over again that I couldn't binge. So I got into a rabbit hole yesterday of, of watching Eurovision videos. Um, I've, never watched, <laughs> I've never really watched Eurovision for the last few years. I feel like I feel like a very bad gay man for, for saying that. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's brave of you to admit that, Danny. I feel like my membership will be, will, will be cancelled. <laughs> your card um, is taken away. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to call them after this and let them know. <laughs> um, but no, I watched the, the Iceland video for this year. Oh, it's so like, good. It's amazing. I was like, maybe Eurovision is actually pretty good. And then I watched some other videos and I was just like, nope, it, it's rubbish. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. Take that back. What are they doing? Are they going to postpone it so everyone that was going to compete this year can do it next year? So, no, none of the people that got through this year are allowed to enter next year, um, which is an absolute tragedy for the Iceland That's entry because it's fantastic. So sad. Oh, that yeah. is. Okay, someone needs to start a petition. Gosh. <laughs> Speaking of petitions. Exactly. Oh yeah. So, exactly. So in terms, you know, we are all people who have elements of activism and campaigning in either our personal or professional lives. How has this period of social distancing um, ch changed that, changed your um, campaigning and your community work? We've seen loads of mutual aid groups pop up across the country um, who offer support um, for those who are more vulnerable or, and those who are um, isolating. So it'd be good to hear about how your, your campaigning has transformed in this period yeah I can I can start off you know basically uh at the beginning of this week we were about, about to launch kind of a major new campaign um getting trying to get MPs to support um reforesting England uh because the government is supposed to to launch its its uh, new English tree strategy um, and we put in a huge amount of work, the whole team, in, in getting it ready. Um, but on the day, you know, we just had to make the call that it, it wasn't the right time. People people are, are rightly kind of preoccupied with other things. And, and, and also politicians are, are having to deal with this crisis. So it's just not the right time to be emailing about, about trees. And obviously that was that was a difficult decision, but I think it was the right one. So, yeah, it's, it's challenging, like all the work that I've, so much of the work that I've been doing over the past few months is having to put it on the back burner. Um, but also, yeah, I think there's opportunities for us to, to get involved in communities. I've, I've volunteered to, to help out with the, you know, the NHS. And it's amazing to see, um, I don't know what the numbers are now, but it looks something like over 400,000 people have volunteered to, to support a community at this time, which is, which is really heartwarming. Yeah, I think like it's been really exciting to see. So like personally, I've also done the same, like I've been involved in some of the mutual aid groups near me and, and, and signed up for NHS volunteers. But what's been, I think, nice in work is obviously the, our kind of communities and networks team have done an incredible job of, of helping our like local groups and network of people shift to, to digital in a really um, quick way. So now there's like a lot, they're doing so much digital organizing and community building and um webinars and stuff and like really managing to kind of support people even without being face to face which is encouraging yeah and speaking about our community groups i've really liked how because obviously even when we talk about our work um our campaigning work we really emphasize the kind of that social justice element where it's those who are poorest that will feel the harshest impacts and it's for me it feels like we're staying true to that it's not just us saying that's what we believe in it's like we're there's kind of almost an extension of climate justice by recognizing that we are we help people we help the most vulnerable in all situations um and trying to align our community groups um and make sure they have the space and feel supported to even do kind of um mutual aid work um for me feels really true to like who we are at our core um and that for me yeah yeah feels very like special and different at this time yeah i think like it's been it's it's one of those things obviously like we all have the luxury of jobs where we can work from home and uh, are, are secure and we don't as much as it's difficult for us to maybe be working from home and be a bit isolated like I one of the reasons that I'm like really conscious of being able to try and join any of those volunteer things or anything that you can is just because so many people are feeling real 
horrible impacts of this and losing livelihoods and and lives and 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 jobs and yeah as Lani mentioned earlier kind of being in a position where they are going to struggle to feed their families so um it's yeah I like trying to keep that in mind I also started um because I'm saving so much money not going out trying to like put the money I save into like a separate pot so that I can like do that for food banks and like supporting like NHS workers and and people that that need it which I think has been quite um it can feel a bit useless when you have to stay at home even though that's the best thing to do um I found that to be quite a useful thing I've noticed there's a lot of charities that are struggling in terms of like their security of their finances and so I've started a direct debit to a hospice because as you said Louisa I'm saving so much money not going to the pub and it just it's it'd be good to give give them some more security in terms of their finances in a little way and I think you know whilst we're all saving money that's we're not all saving money but the ones who was fortunate to be within our role still could do that it would help a lot of people um and just wider it's great to see a grassroots movement be created so quickly like mutual aid because we are a grassroots organization um so just seeing that firsthand and being a part of it firsthand is incredible um to the extent of just seeing we've got just some whatsapp groups of people asking if anyone's seen hand wash or toilet roll for vulnerable neighbors and things and helping to route and that's just great because before this i didn't honestly know my neighbors and now i feel like i know about 40 or 50 of them it's been really beautiful watching everybody support each other and that that growth of love in the country um especially when people recognize that they probably are in a much better position than than so many others and and offering their hands out washed and cleaned and from afar um to people so that they can <laughs> they can um really support those in need at the moment and and to mention our amazing supporters who have just been flooding us with so much support and vice versa and you know the positivity i've seen in all of our groups and our support network has been as in such a strange time where we're all really feeling conflicted about about everything in our lives to see that positivity and that that kind of love being I've had elix from dogs via email and lots of pictures of people's gardens and it's just been it it's so odd isn't it to feel so emotional and happy about how people are behaving at the moment but at a time where you're so sad about about how how lots of people are affected by this too it's it's like a roller coaster no, I mean, speak, speaking of the positivity, um, maybe a good question to end on would be for everyone to go around and say one thing that they're grateful for. Because personally, for me, whenever things are really chaotic and uncertain, those are the things that really try to that kind of anchor me and um, remind me of the good things I have in my life as well, when, especially when things feel very negative with the kind of media influx. So I'm very happy to go first in terms of things I'm grateful for. Um, I'm very grateful for a very supportive work colleagues and force. I've never felt, I felt very supported um, and feel like um, we're all in it together. Um, and often, you know, like we've said, employees up and down the country might not have that situation. They might feel like they have to go into work in such uncertain times. Um, but for me, I'm, I'm very, very lucky to know that I have a team that, that is that is supportive. Louisa, would you want to say what you're grateful for? Sure. Um, yeah, I think so. I, I feel incredibly lucky to be in a position where um, I'm not, this isn't, you know, making me worry about my income immediately and like being able to actually survive. I'm also grateful for having like a flat that I enjoy spending time in and housemates that I like as opposed to being stuck in a awful situation I'm very aware there's a lot of people around the country who, who this is they're stuck in more dangerous situations um and so yeah I feel generally just very lucky and grateful that this is something that I can I can weather yeah Danny um yeah I feel I feel very grateful for the support network that I have personally you know like having having friends and family um, both in my house and people that I can chat to online and you know and, and, and also grateful to all the carers you know the hospital workers the, the care staff and that the basically they're working so that so that we don't have to in a way um, so yeah very grateful to them yeah absolutely Nick would you want to tell us yeah just building what Danny said I'm well I mean really grateful for people who are out there working so that we can sort of bunker down and make sure that we're not 
we're not being a part of the problem. Um, and that goes to people like security, um, people working in supermarkets, um, other essential services. I've got a lot of colleagues uh, from the water sector who are still out making sure water pipes run, um, sewage systems are operating, because all that stuff is critical to make sure that we can all like stay in our homes and stay safe. Um, and it's all going on behind the scenes. So massive kudos to the NHS and all the staff there and massive kudos to everyone else as well who's helping out. Yeah, absolutely. Lani? I'm also grateful for, for our colleagues and um, for being able to work with such a wonderful organisation. Um, it's been incredible. Um, but I'm mostly grateful for my son, who is just a little ray of, well, a very excitable 10-year-old ray of sunshine <laughs> in these times. Um, he's loving being at home, um, which is just beautiful but most of all I'm so grateful for my health and Christopher's health and um a shout out to my family of nurses because they're they're incredible people amazing uh, last but not least Isabel um yeah all of the above um the health of yeah myself my family my partner's family in Italy and his mum is a, a nurse so sort of having that contact with them and making sure they're okay and then also my my parents quite elderly, but um, I'm quite lucky that they can just sort of lock themselves in their home and sort of isolate themselves and get on with it. Um, so yeah, and just just the majority of people that are sort of respecting the rules, and I think most people are sort of staying in. And yeah, and the applause for the NHS last night was so lovely and uplifting, wasn't it? So just that most people are appreciating that we're all in it together and yeah keeping positive and supporting each other yeah oh, well thank you all so much um for that and thank you so much for joining us um i think that's really perked me up um and it's it's just it's nice to feel like we're all in it together it, you know when we're all feeling the same feelings um and as much as we can talk about our stories you know our thoughts are, are with those people on the front line from our nhs workers to those on running our transport and even our supermarkets um and we also encourage you to look after the most vulnerable in your community it's it's a tough time for us all um and anxiety is absolutely high but the only way we're going to get through this is by supporting one another and remembering those vulnerable and pushing ahead so look after yourselves each other and the planet take care and see you soon